totally. Love God, love people, and love life as one church in global locations. If you're VIP here at the Royal Campus, if you text the word VIP HCC to the phone number 59769, it's shown on the screen. Take that text to the Bookstore and Cafe after the experience for a free gift to you. Amen. Also, if you're watching online, we thank you for your faithful giving now. You can go ahead and click give now or text the word giving to the phone number 59769. The information on how to give is there uh, on the screens and uh, and so you can do that now right now uh, on our internet campus so that you can uh, be a part of what God is doing with that amen amen also in recent news in our nation uh, and I shouldn't say recent news just stuff that they're finally catching on camera uh, uh, and so uh, <laughs> amen hallelujah and so uh, I watched on video the other day, uh, yesterday or the, and this morning I guess this morning I suppose Early this morning, I watched on video a man be executed on uh, video outside of a convenience store. <clears throat> I watched the police officer look at him in his face and then shoot him in his face. And, uh, and so in all of that, we want to pray and, uh, and, uh, because I could not imagine what it is. In the press conference, they say that the young man's son uh, said, I just want my daddy back. And uh, <clears throat> I cannot imagine the pain, the agony uh, that that family is going through. And, and we thank God for our nation. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else, but our nation is disingenuous when we say we believe in life, but only some of them count. And so uh, our nation is disingenuous in that. But I love America. And you love America because you wouldn't want to live nowhere else but America. But, but here's the reality. The reality is, is that um, this, is, this is enough. And, uh, and, so, and so there's some strategic things that, that we're working on. We'll talk about that later, but I want to pray tonight. Amen. Father, we pray now for the family of Alton Sterling and Father, not just him, but Tamir Rice and every other one that has suffered injustice, Father, at the hands of those that are paid to protect and serve them. And so, Father, we commit those situations into your hands. Your word declares in Luke chapter 18, Father, that uh, if we cried out to you daily for justice, if an unjust judge would do it, Father, uh, for a, a woman, Father, that how much more would you do for your people? So we, your scripture says, if my people who are called by my name, so tonight as your people, we pray, Father, and we pray that justice would be served, and justice is not some little placation and fake investigation. Justice is if you kill, you got to go to jail. That's the what justice is. You don't get to kill unarmed people, Father. You get to meet force with force. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would avenge that family, comfort that family. And, Father, we pray for those who are calling for peace, but first take a look at their own lives and realize if it was their child or their son or their brother or their sister, they might not understand the emojis that those families are dealing with. But we send your peace. We send your shalom to them, and we do what we can do, which is pray and pray for justice. And we ask that you would do it now, and we will pray until we see you do it. Because it doesn't matter who's sitting at the top of the system, if there's evil behind the system, but we serve the God that has the power and the ability it don't matter who's sitting where. We serve a God that's got the power to change the whole thing. Show yourself strong, Father. Show yourself mighty. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you say amen to that? And I want to be very clear. That's not an anti-cop thing. We thank God for the police. What I am is anti-murder and anti-execution in the middle of the street. So let's just be very clear about that. Amen. Amen. Listen, so many great things have been happening, uh, and, uh, and so I want to just share a couple of them with you. Uh, we were just selected to be the new host for the local flagship Praise the Lord program for TBN, uh, which is the... Which is the... Uh, which is the... Uh, uh, which is the largest uh, Christian television nation in the entire world. And so we thank God for that. Amen. Would you celebrate the Lord for that? Amen. Also, also tonight, actually, I haven't told nobody this. Y'all are going to be the first to hear it. Y'all ready for this? Also, uh, just today, uh, out of Washington, D.C., uh, I was appointed to the Board of Governors for the National Association of Nonprofit. Let me finish. <laughs> you don't even know what it is. Let me finish. 
You're like, I don't know, it's a board though. I just, woo! <laughs> uh, amen. The Board of Governors for the National uh, Association of Nonprofit Organizations and Executives, the largest body of that particular, um, particular type in the entire uh, nation. And so we thank God for that. Amen. Would you celebrate that? Amen. So we'll tell you more about all that, but God is doing great things, and it's only the sixth. Amen. And so we thank him for it. I want to do something real quick, and then we're going to get into the word. I want to do something real quick before we get into the word. Can everybody see my props? Can you see my table? Now, we're going to look at a few scriptures, uh, and so we're going to do that in a minute. These are eggs, and because I just decided I wanted to do this, these are 7-Eleven brand eggs. And then this is, this is frozen chicken breast. Now, what is the difference between this and this? No, 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 no. This wouldn't be sat on long enough so that it could fully develop. This is what he's saying. You're in church on Wednesday night, which means you want to get better, which means you want to grow. You want to be better than you were yesterday. The hen has to sit on the egg long enough for the egg to ever be able to be birthed and turn into chicken. Now, Bishop, what's the point? You're going to see me do this analogy lots because I, I, heard, I heard a preacher do it and I liked it. I sent him an offering for it too. I don't steal, so I sent him an offering. So, <laughs> you know, talking about the Lord spoke to me. No, you was watching Bishop Foreman on archives. But, but, but here's the point I want you to see. Here's the point I want you to see. Here's the point I want you to see. This chicken is nothing but, or this egg is nothing but undeveloped potential. Because it wouldn't be sat on long enough. Sat on, it wouldn't be submissive to who was responsible for covering it. And so because it wouldn't be sat on long enough, it is nothing but undeveloped potential. Do you know they sell these in two different sections in the store? Do you know that this is far more valuable than this? And the only difference is because this wouldn't be sat on long enough to be developed. So touch your neighbor and say, we're in church tonight so we can be the chicken, not the egg. The only difference is that wasn't sat on long enough. It wouldn't take correction long enough. It wouldn't come to church faithful long enough. It wouldn't give its tithes, offerings, and fruits long enough. But you, you, let me tell you who you are. You are the interruption to the dysfunction in your bloodline. Just your neighbor say, I need to be sat on. I need to be sat on. That just means I need to submit myself to the process long enough so that I can be sold in the expensive part of the store. See, you, you can't want to be valuable but not be sat on long enough. Tell me, I'm a queen, I'm a king, but you act like an egg. But you. Amen. So I'm going to do that like 50 more times and I'm going to change the story every time. You're going to be like, whoa. Does that make sense, everybody? Amen. Our students are making their way to where they know they need to make their way to. Amen. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, junior high students are making their way uh, to the training center. High school making their way to the student center. Uh, let's pray. We're going to get right into the word tonight. Anybody expecting tonight? Amen. This atmosphere is charged. I know somebody came expecting something tonight. Father, we pray now that you would speak to us. Father, we pray now that you would give us the ability to move and walk in the great things that you have ordained. Father, we thank you tonight that you customized, tailor made this word for us, your people, so that we would move in the kingdom. That is who you said we could be and what you said we could have. We declare that we are on 10, which means there is nothing missing, nothing like him, nothing broken, and all is well in our lives. We thank you that this atmosphere is already primed. It's already prepped for something supernatural. There is miracle in the room tonight. There is breakthrough in the room tonight. There is something supernatural into room tonight and we thank you for it in Jesus name somebody shout hallelujah I want to move in this thought tonight I want to pick up from where we were on Sunday stop linking and start thinking part two say stop linking and start thinking you can be seated tonight and we are in our series emojis on this first Sunday of this new month and yes you know emojis are symbols that illustrate emotions and our emotions can change cause us to act strange cause unnecessary pain and problems so in this series we are confronting and conquering our emotions so they do not conquer us say I will not, I will not 
be conquered by my emotions any longer. Now, as you know, each message in this series builds upon the previous one. So thank God that you're being the egg that can be sat on long enough so that you can conquer your emotions. Touch your neighbor and say, if you're consistent to it, you'll see this thing work for you. We've learned so far in this series that we cannot trust our emotions. I hope that if you don't learn anything else from this summer series, you realize this one fact. You cannot trust your emotions. They are liars. They are players. They are low-down, dirty dogs. And the saddest part about it is it's part of you that's fighting you. We've learned that our emotions are enigmatic. That means they are mysterious. They are evasive, which means they avoid the issues. And they are erratic, which means they are turbulent and inconsistent. And when we're led by our emotions, we lose the truth about what? God's word about our situation, the truth about the people in the situation, and the part we played in the situation, and the truth about the situation overall. We've learned that we are not our emotions. Say, I am not, not. my emotions. Uh, because we are a spirit. That is our, you should know what I'm getting ready to say, subconscious mind. We possess a soul, which is our conscious mind. Listen, what is the difference? Your subconscious mind is the mind that you are that doesn't take any effort to be. Your subconscious mind are the things that you do that you don't even pay attention to the fact that you're doing them because you've been doing them so long that you do them without thought. See, we don't think about blinking our eyes subconsciously we do it. We don't often think about rocking our necks subconsciously we do it. We don't often think about some of the things we say. They come from our subconscious, which is now our spirit, and they are released, and we have been building up these things since we've been little children. In fact, these things have been injected into us even before we were uh, born uh, uh, in, the, in the womb, even before we came out of the womb. This is why the scripture says the sin of the fathers, the sins of the previous generations can visit to the third and to the fourth generation, which means your emotions were being influenced before you ever came out of the womb. Your emotions were being influenced by the environment in which your mother as she carried you, which means that's why, watch this, Jabez's mother in the scripture, she called him pain because she bore him in pain. But the truth is the entire process of carrying him was painful. So she named him based on his experience, her experience with him. So when he was born, he comes out and he's called the thing that his mama went through. I wonder how many people in here have been called the thing that your mama or your daddy went through before you ever got here. And so your whole life you've been walking out they drama. Y'all not going to say nothing. For your whole life, you've been walking out their dysfunction. For your whole life, you've been walking out what they wish they could have been, what they wish they could have did. But oh, let me tell you who you are. Let me remind you. You are the interruption to the dysfunction in your bloodline. You are the curse breaker. And I don't care what has not happened in your bloodline up until this point. The day you were born, an interruption showed up. And I don't care how many mistakes you've made up to this point. From here on out, you're going to be on 10. Now look at this, look, look, look at this, look at this, look at this. Uh, we are not our emotions. Say, I'm not my emotions. We are a spirit, our subconscious mind that has a soul. That is our conscious mind. These are the things that you think about. These are the things that you think about before you do. These are the things that you contemplate. These are the things that perhaps even you ruminate over. These are the things that you give thought to. And uh, our conscious mind, our thoughts, our will, and our emotions. So check it out. We possess emotions. We are not our emotions. The issue that our emotions give us is they want us to think that we are them. So then we can't ever see ourselves escaping from them. You missed it. This is why we'll do stuff we know we should not do that's not making anything better. But we do it anyhow because our emotions will tell us, well, that's who you are. Well, I came to encourage somebody. You're going to have to look at your emotions and say, that may have been who I was, but that is not who I am any longer. See, watch this. You get angry, you're not anger. You get sad, you're not sadness. You get mad, you're not madness. You experience times where you're glad, but you're not glad. You are not your emotions. You are a spirit that possesses emotions, and we live in a body. Our emotions, we've learned, are our response to change and losing control, but we are not them. And we've learned that we don't have to be controlled by them. I've been, so, I've been so encouraged when I hear people, and sometimes maybe when I see them, they've got little stuff going on, different things going on, and they'll say, I just need to choose some better emotions right now. I've been so encouraged to hear that because I said, somebody's listening. Because, because watch this, sometimes you got to look at yourself and say, I just need to choose different. I'm letting this situation run me opposed to me running this situation. That's why, let's go back to Paul. Paul said, I think myself happy, which means I'm t this looks like hell on earth, but I choose to look at it and say something good is getting ready to come out of it. It looks like the worst day of my life, but I'm looking at it saying, wherever there's a death and wherever there's a burial, there's got to be a resurrection. 
so, so, so watch this, watch, watch this. Well, uh, we learn we don't have to be controlled by our emotions. We can choose them. Say, I can choose them. Mm -hmm. And it's not a denial of our existing emotions. It's choosing to behold another emotion because whatever we behold, we become. Say, whatever, whatever. I, behold, I behold, I become. Do this. Whatever you put in front of you is what you're becoming. Which is why some of y'all just got permission right there to drop some people. You've been beholden messy. Oh, okay. You've been beholden messy folk that ain't trying to go nowhere, ain't trying to be about nothing, always pulling you down, always telling you, we, you ain't this, you ain't that, you ain't good. Sometimes you got to say, up next. Y'all remember that little thing? What was that little toy, the little red toy where you had the little thing you put in there, you pulled a little lever and the thing circled? What's it called? Oh, who? Viewmaster. Oh, I never remember being called that. Mine was from Disney. I don't know where y'all's was from. Mine was from Disney. It's the Viewmaster. Okay, that's what we're going to go with. They're going to find it in the video room and put it up. Now, now watch this. Uh, watch this. Whenever, whenever, what I was look, whenever you were looking at something and you needed to change it, you didn't pray about changing it. By the name of Jesus, I just pray that it moves on to the next picture because I need to see something better. You just said, I choose to click another one. Sometimes when you feel discouraged, psh, I choose to cook another one. Sometimes when you feel like you ain't going to make it, I choose to cook another one. Sometimes when you feel like your mistakes are getting ready to overtake you, I choose to cook another one. No, 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 no. Watch this, watch this now. Watch this, watch this. Uh, whatever we behold, we become. Now, I'll say this. Whatever you behold, you're becoming. Now, it's, if you're not on 10 in every area of your life, your emotions are the thieves behind that. Every area. But Bishop, what about my money? Your emotions are behind that. Bishop, what about my car? Your emotions are behind that. You got attached to, to a purchase. Oh, it's got real quiet right here. If you're not on 10 in every area of your life, anybody in here tonight want to be on 10 in every area of your life? I'm talking about the kind of life where it gets so good, you almost like, this is just too, Jesus Christ. Every time I turn around, over here, over there, over there, over there, everywhere. If there's any area that's less than 10, your emotions are the thieves behind that. And tonight, you're going to make them tricks pay. Let me quantify what I mean by trick. A trick is something doing something ain't got no business doing. Let me just clarify what I'm saying. Now, what's well, this? But, uh, uh, your thieves, are, uh, your emotions are behind that. But tonight. Now, now watch this, Bishop, why do we say but tonight? Because I need you to stop thinking it takes 20 days and 20 months. Or this is what I'm talking about right here. Oh, it was a view master. Okay, well, mine, mine must have been licensed and called something else because I don't remember seeing view master. Y'all remember that there? And whenever, and whenever the current picture was not something you needed to behold and become no more, you just click. So when all your failures start coming out, you ain't going to do it because you messed up last year. You ain't going to do it because you did it. Just click. And when your past shows up and says, you made too many mistakes, you ain't going to be able to make it. You ain't going to be able to click. And when a generational curse tries to show up and overtake you like it overtook the generation before you, click. So it is a view master. Amen. Okay, watch this. Well, I had the Disney view master. But... <laughs> no, 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 watch this. Watch this. I have you say stuff like, but tonight, is because you got to get out of this complacency mentality where it's going to happen one day. Most people don't change because they keep delaying it. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You know, I always know when people. I always know when people. I always know. There's. There's sometimes I talk to people and they're busy. You right. You right. You right. You right. No, you right. I'm like, I know I'm right. I didn't need you to affirm that. I have no doubt about what I'm saying being accurate. Here, here's what happens though. But the mentality is you're right, but I don't know where to start, so I'm gonna delay starting at all. I'm going to do it one day. So when I have you say things like, but today and but tonight, what I'm doing, watch this, what's in, in, in psychology and therapy, what we're doing is creating an instant psh, interruption. And when we create instantaneous interruptions, what it does is breaks you from how you used to think and now connects you to the way he created you to think. That's why the scripture says, let this mind that was in Christ be in you also. Jesus said, I got three and a half years to train y'all up to get y'all ready to go because we got a world to change, which means I ain't got time to be sitting around pacifying folk. We got work to do. 
So his mentality was not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but tonight. That's why when he, I feel like preaching tonight. Somebody's pulling on me tonight. That's why when Jesus was 12 and his mama and Joseph had left him for three days and they didn't know where he was and they came back to him and uh, Mary came back and said, uh, uh, Jesus, where you been? We've been looking for you. We've been, we've been going crazy. We called Jack and them. Jack didn't know where you at. We called your mama. Your mom didn't. We called him. Some of y'all know what that's about now. I hadn't forgot the name of the movie. What's the name of it? What's love got to do with it? <laughs> uh, I says, what's this? Jesus, we don't know where you're at. And you know what Jesus said? Woman, did you not know I must be about my father's business? He said, I don't have time to waste. He said, you think you have time to waste because ain't nobody ever told you that you don't have to waste time. But I'm speaking to some folk at Wednesday Night Live that say, I ain't got no more time to waste. I've wasted too many years running with low-thinking people, running with folk not going nowhere, loving down. I've wasted too much time. Touch your neighbor and say, you ain't got no time to waste. So tonight, you're going to make your emotions pay you back. Somebody holler, but tonight. Ain't got no time for that. I'm going to do it one day. No, you got to do it today, now. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Sunday, we learned this that when we're in present situations, circumstances, and events in life, we often don't think, but we what? Link because of our what? Past experiences. And we activate what we call the law of linkage, which is when your mind links two similar events. They're not the same, they're similar. Similar enough for you to connect them when there is no connection. And respond to the present as if it's the past and to the new as if it's the old. And I gave you these points and tonight I want to delve deeper into them tonight. The first point was this. When you link, nothing is pink. And pink as a noun means to be in the best condition, meaning to be in 10. See, negative emotions can affect us long after the original event, which is why you'll discover many people that you meet, they may have adult bodies, but they have childlike mentalities. Not you, you're spiritual, but somebody that you know. And when you listen to them, they're not talking about anything present. They are talking about everything that has been in the past. And the reason they are stuck in the past is because of their negative emotions are still affecting them because their body has failed to let go of the response to the negative situation from the past. So they find themselves with unexplained aversions, dislikes, self-sabotaging behaviors, destructive beliefs, phobias, and even physical problems because they have now, watch this, they are now stuck in a situation that's no longer present, but they're still mentally present in the situation I just spoke really fast so let me just sum all that up some folk ain't here they are stuck in what has been who did them wrong who hurt them who messed them over and the reality is is that although they are present in the day physically they are not present emotionally which is why you'll sometimes say I just wonder why somebody can't give me all of them because they ain't got all of them to give this is why the psalmist said he restores my soul. I've told you this before. Soul is your mind, thoughts, will, and emotions. Well, restore it means put it back together. So if it can be put back together, that means somehow, somewhere, pieces got left. Where did they get left? And past situations and experiences. And so now you are present in the day physically, but you are not present in the day emotionally because parts of you have been broken off and left in people, which is why you cannot, watch this, I'm going to go left on you, which is why you got to stop messing around before you get married. Why, Bishop? Because parts of you will get left in other people. And now you're trying to get, okay, y'all, y'all just, see, I, I went left on you. You didn't even know I was getting ready to go there. Parts of you will get left in people that are gone. Okay, see, I went left. You wasn't even expecting that. You wasn't even expecting that. You were like, woo, he sure came with a curveball right there. What, 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 what's this? Since nothing is peak, you'll live in the age of emojis as described by the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 3, 1. Can I teach tonight? He says this, verse 1, but know this, that in the last days, here it is, most people take this, most preachers, the verse is on the screen now, most preachers, uh, when they preach about the last days in 2 Timothy 3, 1, when they preach about the last days, they'll talk about these last and evil days. You didn't hear somebody say that? And the problem is, is that they have their bags packed ready on Jesus to come back, and Jesus is looking at this and saying, you want me to come back for this? He, I, Jesus said, I'm coming back for a bride, a full-grown woman, which he calls his church. Uh, she ain't there yet. He come back for a bride, not a little girl. What does that mean? Mature. See, you're mature tonight because you're in church on a Wednesday night. 
You, you're missing what I'm saying. See, mature folks say, uh, listen, I, yeah, I worked all day. My neighbor worked all day. We all worked all day. But I got too much growing to do. I got too much progress to make to sit up and talk about I'll just sit at home and stream when I'm in driving distance to the nearest campus. Second, so go Second Timothy 3, 1. Watch this. He says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous time has come. Leave the verse up. Now, here's what's interesting. Last days here doesn't mean the end of the age. Watch this. The last days here, it means in the echo. What is an echo? An echo is simply a repeat of something that has already started. So what is he saying? He's saying, listen, I just want y'all to know it was like this 2,000 years ago. And in the echoes, which is nothing going to be, not, be nothing more than a repeat of the present in the future, I want you to know it's going to happen then too. See, sometimes you'll think things are getting worse. They're not getting worse. You're just finally paying attention. He says, but know this. It's just like sometimes when people get in relationships, relationship, issues, like, all of a sudden out of nowhere it went wrong. Baby, it's been messed up. It didn't all of a sudden get mad. It didn't all of a sudden go crazy. You just didn't pay attention to none of that because you were hoping a little anointing oil and prayer was going to fix that. But I think I got some people in here tonight that realize anointing oil and prayer can't fix somebody else. People only change when they're learning up that they want to or hurting up that they have to, which means I'll do my part, but you're going to have to do your part. That's friendship, relationship, everything. Watch this now. Watch this. Y'all still here? He said, but know this, that in the last days, in the echo, perilous times. And this word perilous, I don't even know if I'll be able to preach beyond this word perilous. This word perilous in the Greek means this, difficult to cope with because it's so harsh. Say the age of emotions. Of emotions. I was trying to say emojis and emotions, and they both came out. Say emotions. Emojis. Now look at this, watch this. He says, it, they're going to be perilous times. They're going to be so difficult to cope with because they're so harsh. But look at this next definition. Strength diminishing over time. He says, but know this, in the echo, it's not that things got any worse. It's just that people's strength will begin to diminish. I need some real honest people with me in here tonight. Have you ever gone through some stuff in life that when you look back at it, it's way worse than some of the stuff you're dealing with now, but for some reason you feel like this is worse than what you've already beat? Who am I preaching to? No, nobody? Have you ever looked at some stuff and said, like, this is really nothing? Why, though, am I feeling like I'm being overtaken by this? When a few years ago I killed a lion, I killed a bear, I killed a giant, and this ain't nothing but a... Anybody ever felt like that? Why? Because you got caught up in your emotions. And your strength diminishes over time when you're emotional. When you're emotional, your strength begins to decrease over time. When you're emotional, your strength begins to go down. And watch what he says. He says, but know this, in the last days, in the echo, difficult times, because your strength diminishes, will come. For men will be, here it is, lovers of themselves. Got it? Now, now watch this. We, we live in the age of selfies. And so I'm not judging nobody because I take them too. I hate taking them because it makes my neck look thick, and I don't like that. Even with the stick, it's like I don't like I don't like looking thick neck like this. I just I prefer a nice slender thing. Me personally, me personally. But <laughs> now here's my point though. Here's here's uh, here's what here's what the Lord said. He said, "Son, he said selfies are an international manifestation. Watch this. Watch this. An international manifestation." of global internal dysfunction. I'm going to say it again. Let me say it another way that's a bit more clear. They are the physical manifestation of global internal dysfunction. Bishop, what do you mean? The reason most folk make bad emotional decisions is because when they're making those decisions, the focus is on selfie. The reason they treat you any old kind of way after you've been good to them is because their focus is on I ain't judging nobody. I tell you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, but I'm saying is it's revealing a dysfunction that we all inherently have as humans. Whenever we get focused on our emotions, notice what he says. For men will love themselves. Now, what's wrong with loving yourself? What's wrong with it is when loving you intentionally hurts others. You ever sat up and wondered, how could somebody treat me like them? And then you look and you're like, it's because in the moment while they were emotional, 
they turn the camera. And the problem with a selfie is you can't see anything else but you. How you feel, how you think. It's quiet, church. This is why you'll see parents make child, uh, decisions that negatively impact and impact their children. Because mama got to have a life too. Daddy got to have a life too. Men will be lovers of themselves. Why do we do stuff we know we ain't got no business doing? I can't see consequences when I'm focused on selfie. It's quieted and hidden in the Roman Catholic Convention of Churches, and we love Roman Catholics. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Think about every dumb decision you've made. Notice, you'll normally see it's right there in the first part of verse 2. You flip the camera from, well, what does God say? What does the word say? What, 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 what do I know I'm to do? What do I know I'm supposed to pray? Why am I, why am I, I'm, why am I even acting like this? I already know. It's because you can't see anything else when the camera's flipped on you. It's quiet, Jesus Christ. Now, again, let me be clear. I'm not saying anything's wrong if you take it. What I'm saying is, is it's just revealing what happens when we get our emotions. Now, watch this. He says they'll be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Say lovers, lovers. of money. Now, money's not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. And let me tell you this. If you make decisions based off of money alone, you will always make the wrong decision. Always. And you just prove that you love money. If you're, I'm going to do this because they're going to pay me an extra 20 cents. You're going to ruin your life over 20 cents. Why? Because it's quiet in here. Clean this up. It's quiet. <laughs> But, but it says, they'll be lovers of money. They will chase the dollar. Song says, for the love of money, people will. Uh huh. Y'all know what the OJ said. Now, watch this. They'll be boasters. Now, watch this. This is so amazing. Say, boasters. What is a boaster? Somebody who has to boost truth by embellishment of truth because the truth isn't impressive even to them. They have to boast truth, which means they embellish truth because the truth isn't even impressive to them. These are people who you're talking about one thing and they bring up something else that has nothing to do with what you're talking about to boast about it. Be like, church show was good tonight. I love my new car. What? Okay, okay, watch this. I'm going to get some of y'all co-workers right now because somebody already learned this week. Y- y'all just talk about, man, that was a great meeting. I'm so excited we're going to be doing this. Be doing this. I love my husband. He is so awesome. We're talking about reports. I don't know why you... Evidently, you're not convinced because you were looking for a co-signer. <laughs> Boasters, proud. Pride comes before what? Falls. Prideful people. You know prideful people because they can never be corrected. They can never admit they're wrong. Pride never admits it's wrong. Private pride never gets correct. Blasphemers, these are people who speak against, specifically this word in Greek means people who speak against leaders. They're, uh, they get quiet there. And not just church leaders. Any leader. Got it? Which means your supervisor. Which if you don't know him, don't have to. But what I do know is if you talk about him, you'll never be one. You can't get promoted to what you disrespect. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. This we're holy here. Don't get it twisted. Unholy here in Greek. It means lacking distinction. Which means when people look at Christians, there ought to be a distinction. Not perfection, but distinction. So being a Christian doesn't mean uh, you got to live holy. And most of the people talking about living holy, they live holy. Bible calls it whoremongling. It, it, means they, it means they just live without, and let me be clear, so nobody gets confused about what I'm trying to say there. It just means they live without conviction to values. That's why God would often tell his people, he, you, if you read your Bible, God, when he was angry with the children of Israel, he would say, you hoard after the gods of this and that. Now, he doesn't mean that they went and had a sexual relationship with the gods of that. He meant you have no conviction to your loyalty to me. He says, you are bought and sold to whoever says, hey, 
That's what he was saying when he says that. So when it says holy here, he's talking about distinction. Touch your neighbor and say, we're not sinless, but we should sin less. It just means distinction here. He said Christians, watch this, when they're in their emotions, they won't look different. They'll have to tell you they're a Christian. You won't be able to look and see it. Next verse, next verse, next verse. Come on, next verse. Unloving, unloving. And, and leave that verse up because this one, this one's really interesting. Unloving means, you ever, you ever got to, you ever been so hurt by a friend or whatever so bad that when you look at the scenario, you're like, I ain't going to be able to trust nobody. And now you judge 7 billion people by the actions of one. And actually that wasn't a person you loved down. That was an animal, <laughs> a dog or a pig. It's quiet, church. So, so watch this. When, when, when you say, I just can't trust nobody. Well, to, lo to love, you have to trust. So what you're really saying is I'm so emotional now, I have shut down the, my ability to even do what I'm commanded to do, which is love God, love people, love life. Unforgiven. I ain't forgiven them. Did you know what they did to me? But what about you've done what you've done to somebody else? See, we're the honest people that can say, you know what? Some people have done some stuff to me, but let's just be honest. There's some stuff that if I look back over my life, I've done to people, which is why I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful for the blood of Jesus. What does it do? It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. And I don't know about you, but that blood washes me free from all of my sins and washes me from every mistake. How about your neighbor say, I'm not perfect, but I'm pressing forward. See, sometimes we can get there and say, I can't believe so-and-so did that. But what about what you did to God? And I know it's probably going to get quiet as we go walking through these emotional things here. But that's all right. I'll shout you at the end. But I just need to get this out. When you're in your emotions, you will be unforgiving. In fact, you will say things like this. I don't want to hear that right now. Somebody will be trying to talk to you and say, listen, well, just hear me out. Just listen. I don't want to hear that. Oh, Y'all not going to say nothing to me. Well, let's just have a conversation. I don't want to have no conversation. You'll see their phone number. Ignore. And here's what's crazy. Because you're passive aggressive, you'll be like, did they leave a message, though? Just. You don't want to answer, but you want them to call back. Ooh. All right, verse unforgiving slanderers that means malicious gossips when you're in your emotions you will maliciously gossip you'll say stuff that when you think about the stuff you didn't say you be like oh my god and somebody reminds you of what you said you be like i said that without self-control brutal when you're in your emotions you're brutal you're ruthless you're ruthless You'll do stuff to hurt people that you know hurts people. But when you're in your emotions, you're brutal. Despisers of good. So somebody else will be talking about good stuff going on in their life. Hmm. Hmm. Please. Huh. Uh, what's it? Because when you're in your emotions, you will despise the good that happens for other people. You'll just watch this. You'll despise good stuff happening to you because you'll know how brutal and ruthless you've been. And you'll be like, why did something good happen to me? I don't deserve that. Lord, why are you doing this for me? Next verse. It says there'll be traitors. Some folk ain't just loyal like they used to be. When you're, you're, when you're in an emotional state, your loyalties, and we're going to look at this tonight, you'll often love those that hate you and hate those that love you. Headstrong. Ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. I'm grown. Somebody need to tell you something because you're too old to be making them same mistakes. I got something helping here. Haughty. Haughty is very similar to pride but slightly different than pride because haughty deals with the, one, the way one views themselves juxtaposed to others. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. No, 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 this is interesting. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, this is interesting because it almost seems to do this. It means that, watch this, it, it, count, it, it pits as opposites God and pleasure. So, 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 so what is he saying? He's saying, you love, watch this, your distractions 
more than you love your focus. You get distracted easily because it takes your focus off of the emotion. Now realizing the emotion created the distraction. All right, this is why you okay. All right, this is why you see this is why you see people love God, uh, 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 all that, and, and in church and serving and faithful and doing good, and then you'll see them do something. You'll be like, because what they were in was in an emoji, and in that emoji they got distracted, and they stopped focusing on God, and they started focusing on their distraction. Okay, let me name distraction. Clubs, partying, hanging out, acting like a fool, drinking, smoking, calling old folk from the past that you know ain't about nothing and you know what that call is about before you made that call in the first place. Looking up folk on Facebook, looking up folk on Twitter, looking up folk on Instagram. Y'all not saying nothing to me. You're getting distracted because you're emotional. Getting in other folks' business so you ain't got to handle your business. I'm just going to move on because the shouting really got really low right through here. Having a form of godliness but, but denying its power. What is that referring to? Christians ruled by their emotions. And from such people, what does he say? Turn away. Now, here's what he's saying. When you find somebody that's up in their emojis and they're, they have a form of godliness but they're controlled by their emotions, he said, watch this, he said, turn away. He said, because I don't want you looking at them thinking that's okay to act that way. He didn't say don't pray. He just said turn away. He said, because I don't want you to think I'm going to let you act like that just because you get emotional. See, I think there's a few people here tonight. I said it last week. When the truth be told, you tried to act a fool when you were emotional. And when you tried to step outside of what you knew, God was like, oh, no, you come on. Oh, no, I'm not even for, no, this is not even going down like that. Nope. No, sir. Not happening. You plotted rebellion. And the Lord was like, oh, no, <laughs> not even going to happen. I'll let the car break down. I'll let this happen. I'll let that happen. You, I done invested too much in you, and you are not going to get turned around because you're emotional. Okay, watch this. I'm almost out of this. I know this is, you know, I know. I know it's all up in our face. That's the neighbor's. I know it's in your face, too, because it's in mine. It's in mine. It's in all of our faces. But this is the word. Now, watch this. He says, for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various sons. What is he saying now? He's dealing with this from a leadership perspective, and so that's why he uses women. But it's not exclusive to women, it's just, but it is inclusive to women. What he's saying is, is when you get people who are emotional, they find other people who are emotional, and then they start sinning together. One emotional person finds another emotional person, and now emotional people go do stuff they have no business doing. And that could be anything that they have no business doing. He says, load it down with sin. What does sin mean? It's an archery term. It means missing the mark. So now you got two distracted people driving down the highway and ain't nobody watching the road. You sitting here, so what you talking about? And they sitting over in the past seat, y'all looking at one another, ain't nobody watching the road. Sometimes somebody I know that drives is on their phone a lot. And so and I, I know somebody like this. And so they're on their phone a lot. And so whoever's in the passenger seat, don't matter whoever, you know, whoever's in the passenger seat, it is their responsibility when who this person that I know is handling business. It don't matter who it is. I mean, if it, it doesn't matter who it is. Another pass, I mean, another, um, um, Another pastor, another bishop, or whatever, it don't matter this person I know, it don't matter who it is. Hey, whoever's in that passenger seat, if they're in that passenger seat, and, if, and it is their responsibility to watch, to make sure that everything's going on over here, because this person I know, they be on the phone a lot. They got to handle business and they got to advance God's kingdom, and they're on 10. No, they really are. This person I know. Now, now here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. The issue is uh, sometimes this person I know, used to happen years ago for this person that I know, Sometimes they would look over and, 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 and whoever was supposed to be watching the road and navigating and this and that, they were sitting trying to handle some business too. <laughs> so the problem is when this person happened to look over, no, they were telling me about it. When this person happened to look over, they'd be like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be looking at the road. 
That's how you live life when you get emotional and you find somebody else emotional and now nobody's paying attention to where anybody's going because both of y'all are distracted. It might be a cousin, it might be an auntie, it might be a brother, it might be a sister, it might be a whoever, but the book says, what does the book say? The book says that you'll creep into their house and you'll make them captive and y'all will both be distracted, being led away by your emotional pulls. Okay, let's, we're almost out of this. I know it's rough. I know. Verse 7. Ver, verse 7. I just got a few more verses. Okay, we, we, we're almost through here. All right. Always learning. Here's the trip Paul said. They in church all the time. He says, but they never come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janice and Jambres resisted Moses, watch this. You know somebody that's emotional because once their emotions really start rising up, they resist leadership. Jan Janice and Jambres are not listed anywhere else in the Bible except here. Which means Paul knew a story that Moses didn't write, but he told. They're not mentioned because they're so insignificant, they don't need to be mentioned because their emotions got them disqualified to be mentioned. Men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith. Watch this, we're almost through this. But they will progress no further. Why? Their emotional instability, here's what Paul is saying. He says their emotional instability is why they have no productivity. Because they can't stay focused and motivated long enough to get anything done. They'll have a boast, burst of focus for about 20 minutes. Then their emotions pull them back and say, come on over here. Come on over here. They'll, they'll, they'll have three great days. Then their emotions will pull them over. He says, watch this. They won't have any productivity because of their emotional instability. And he says their folly or foolishness is going to be made manifest to all. But evil men and imposters, verse 13, will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. By what? Their emotions. But look at verse 14. Here it is. Here's how you make them pay. Now, I got these two, two last points and we're done. Y'all all right? Because it's, it's got, y'all started church tonight real turnt. Turn is an urban colloquialism. It means really excited and on fire and passionate about Jesus. And then right through here, it's like an afternoon rainstorm. But you, what, what's this? Paul is writing to his son. Now, Paul is the only father that Timothy knows because Timothy's daddy was a rolling stone. And so Paul, Timothy is raised by Eunice and Lois, his mother and grandmother. And so he doesn't know any other leader but Paul because Paul took him as a little boy. Somewhere between the ages of 15 and 17, Paul took him. Paul came to the church and he saw him. He said, I like this boy, Timothy. This boy, Timothy's on his stuff. He's faithful. He's loyal. He knows the scriptures. He's handling business. He said, you're going to come with me and we're going to change the world. He takes him. He takes him to the process of maturing him to become a man because Paul... Uh, Timothy's mother and grandmother understood that a mother thanked God for her, but she couldn't do what a man could do in order to make a man. It takes a greater man to make a greater man. So, so she said, I'm not going to sit here and buy myself a Father's Day card. Okay, y'all not going to say nothing. Okay, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him to somebody that knows what to do with him. And so she got out of his way. Why is this important, Bishop? Because I want you to understand why he speaks to him the way he does. So uh, Paul, uh, Timothy's mother and grandmother, they give him up to Paul, which was common in the scripture. Anytime somebody was getting ready to become great, they were given to the man of God for the man of God to do what uh, a natural mother and father could not do. Read it for yourself. 2 Kings 2, 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Read it for yourself. But watch this now. Are you still here? So when he writes to Timothy, he's not writing to him as just a member of the church. He's writing to Timothy saying, look, you're not like all the rest of them. So you don't get to act like the rest of them because you want a mind. So let's flip it. What are you saying, Bishop? Let's flip it for our church tonight. God is saying to you tonight, you don't get to act like everybody else because you want a mind. You're my son. You're my daughter, and you don't get to act like everybody else does. Look at what he says. But you, he says, I ain't studying them. They're not sons and daughters. I'm not studying them. He said, but you, you're my son. That's what God's saying to you tonight, Wednesday night. God says, you, you're my daughter. You're, you're my son. You, watch this, must continue. 
in the things which you've learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. If I had time to teach it, I would, but I don't have time to do that. He says, you must continue. Touch your neighbor and say, you must continue in the things you've learned. See, this is how you keep things pink. The best of the best. You continue in the things you've learned. See, stop getting co-signers who don't continue. This is what he means. Sometimes this is what we do, not you but your neighbor. We will find people who half do stuff and then use them as the measuring stick to say, well, I, I don't do that though. Not realizing God never compared you to them. He compared you to yesterday's version of yourself and said, now I expect reasonable progress in a reasonable amount of time, which means you don't get to compare yourself to your crazy kinfolk. You, you, you see, you're not getting it. You, you are the one sent to help them. So sometimes you'll feel, sometimes you'll feel like, well, God, there's nobody else doing it. God, there's so few people that I can even look to or talk to or have conversations with. God, because all this craziness is around me. God, who do I even talk to? You. You must continue in the things you've learned. He said, I ain't studying them. A studying is a southern colloquialism, which means paying attention to. Paul said, I'm not paying attention to none of them other folks. He said, they finna, they finna fail, and it's going to happen in front of everybody. He said, but you, touch your neighbor and say, but you, you must continue in the things you're learning. Why? Because when they get made a fool of because they couldn't continue, you're going to be over there saying, I'm so glad I came to church. I'm, I'm so glad I bought that series. I'm so glad I serve like I do. I'm so glad I give like I do. I'm so glad I'm faithful like I am because you, even if you don't have a co-signer, Notice he didn't say, Timothy, you and Titus. He didn't say, you and Phoebe. Okay? He, Phoebe from Romans, she was, she, was, she was one of the servants in the church in Rome. Uh, all that. He didn't say that. He said, you. He said, so you're going to feel like you're the only one doing it. And it's not true, but you're going to feel that way. And he said, I don't care. Do it anyhow. I came to tell somebody tonight, you may feel like you're the only one trying to be on 10, but the folk around you, do it anyhow. Amen. Touch and never say, do it anyhow. All right, now that's point one. Now, when you link, nothing is what? Pink. How do I keep it pink? I continue in the things that I've learned. Which means when you get emotional, you don't sit there and put on some sad music to fit your emotions. When you get emotional, you don't start looking at old photos. When, 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 you get, when, you get, when you get emotional, you don't start reminiscing and going down memory lane. Memory lane, let me tell you what that is, Elm Street. So, so, you know who's on Elm Street? Freddy the Krueger. That's who's on Elm Street. He shows up in your dreams. Y'all not going to say nothing to me. He shows up in your dreams and tries to take you out while you sleep. Are you here? Going to memory lane, that's Elm Street. Freddy's going to get you. Now, watch this. If you want things to stay pink, what do you do? Come on, church, do what? When you get discouraged. When you feel like giving up. When you're an emotional mess. When you want to cuss somebody out. If you did cuss them out, you realize you shouldn't have cussed them out. I'm talking about how you, your neighbor used to be. You're good now, though. I'm talking about you. <laughs> Two, when you link, it clouds how you think. Now, watch, watch this. Watch this. I, I said this, and I want to get to this third point because I want you to see this. When you're linking, you don't look at what's in front of you nor listen to what's being said because you filter everything through emotions. And you'll name something new, something old because how, of how you feel versus what's real because you're linking, not thinking. Say, I must stop, I must stop. linking and start thinking. All right, so watch this. Watch this. When you link, you form a mental snapshot of the original event. Got it? And your body assumes a physical and mental posture similar to the way it originally reacted, even if that response proved to be counterproductive, which leads us right into the third point. But I want you to get this idea of the mental snapshot. 
Y'all throw that view master thing back up. That's a great analogy to use for this. Now, here's what I want you to see. In that view master, th there, there's, let's see, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Let's just go with 14. All right. <laughs> what we're going with. All right. So 14. Somebody say 14. All right. Now, uh, that 14, actually, let's go to 12. We're going to make it 12 for this analogy because 12 is the number of foundation. Okay. What is the foundation? It is a default. Now, say 12. All right. Now, watch this. In that, you've got default responses to certain emotions. That whenever you experience that emotion, the law of linkage finds that response and puts it up on the screen. Does that make sense? All right. So when you're angry, some people, when they get angry, you can look at them. Song said it's written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. Why? Because you, this is my anger response. Got it? I, and some people, watch this. How many people, how many people, some, uh, they told me this about myself, and I, I didn't even know this about myself. They told me that this is so we, you can tell when you're a little, you know, a little, uh, a little perturbed because you start cracking your neck. <laughs> and I said, no, I'd just be cracking my neck. And then I looked at it and I said, oh, I guess so. I guess that is true. No, I'm just joking. Here, here's the point. Here's the point. I wasn't even aware. Be a good church. Because I linked so quickly. I wasn't even aware that was my response. How many things do we do so quickly that we don't think we just immediately link and we're not even aware that what we're doing is destructive or counterproductive? So watch this, watch this, watch this. You ever been, you ever been called to, your, to, to a superior, your bosses or supervisor, something like that office? Watch this. And, and immediately, you didn't think, praise the Lord, Bishop Joel said, this is going to be a month of favor. Let me, let me go and get my stuff together because they sure finna give me that coin off and show them. I'm getting my own company cell phone, bless God. Watch this. Because you remember being called into the disciplinarian room with your mama or your daddy, and they had a tool in their hand to help enforce the law. Every time, watch this, every time, you've linked now that every time you want, you need to be seen by authority, you've now linked that to pain. So when they say the boss wants to see you, what is this about? Can y'all send me some notes before the meeting? I just want to know what we're going to be, what are we meeting about? I mean, is everybody else meeting? Did you get called into a meeting too? Look at how you're doing. Did you get called into a meeting too? I mean, is this is just me they calling into a meeting? Well, why we ain't well, why they ain't meeting with you? Hmm. Well, you know what? Hold up. I'm finna just type up. Thank you so much for this great opportunity. I have learned so much. Because you link authority with pain. Okay, I'm gonna do one tonight. It's gonna make you shout. You ever wonder why certain people don't know you, but you discover they don't like you? And you're like, well, what did I do to you? It's because when they see you, they link to who hurt them. That's why some people have an issue. Watch this. Watch this. That's why some people may have an issue. For example, uh, uh, they may have just issues with uh, uh, a woman. Be a black woman, white woman, Hispanic woman, Latin woman, uh, Asian woman, every kind of woman, every woman. It's all in her. And be like, what is your issue? Why don't you like women? Because she links you to her mama. That's why women be talking about, I don't get along with other women. Me says, I'm getting along with other women. No, you link it. Maybe it's a man. Maybe it's a man. Maybe it's a man. Uh, maybe it's a man. Cause, because, because sometimes, watch this, maybe it's a man. Because maybe you think to yourself, you know what? Well, a man hurt me, and a black man hurt me. That's why I don't go to church. Because he's a black bishop. They won't tell you that. It got quieter in here than the mouse. Or it's a black this or white this or whatever it is. The race is insignificant. The point is the link. 
is that you're linked. And so sometimes people will have issues with you and their issue with you is because they've now linked you to someone or something else that you have nothing to do with. And so immediately, because they can't stand somebody that hurt them 20 years ago when they see you, they don't like you and don't even know you. Y'all remember the movie School Days? Uh, okay, only five do, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. Say the link. Say it again. Say the link. Say it one more time. Say the link. Now, now, now here's, here's what I need to see. When people are linking, what ends up happening is that we've got that third point. When you link, you begin to what? Sink. Now, the last couple of messages, we've looked at Peter walking on water uh, to see the law of linkage in action so you can recognize and replace it with another emotion and how Peter began to sink because he started to link. But tonight, I want to show you that same principle with, the, uh, with some verses we've looked at before in this series, but in the context of the law of linkage so you can see it with David. Say the law of linkage. Here it is. Go to 2 Samuel 17.1. Now, this is Absalom, David's son. And Absalom wanted to uh, have a coup, take over the government. And he wanted to take it from his father, David, because somehow he convinced himself that he could do what his daddy did and he could do it better. He convinced himself that he had what it took to sit in the throne of power when he couldn't even be trusted to clean the bathroom. You know, it's amazing the things people think they can do because you make it look easy. See, some people think they could be you, and you're like, man, you just don't understand. I make this look easy. If you knew the hell I had to deal with and the situations I had to deal with, I just make it look easy. That's what they say. I just make it look easy. I think there's a few folk in here that can say, Bishop, truth be told, if folk only knew the nights I had to cry and the issues I had to deal with and the problems I had to confront these last few years in my life, I just made it look easy. Watch. So Absalom wants to take over the government. He wants to take over his father. And I want you to see this build up. 2 Samuel 17, verse 1. It says, Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Now let me choose 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight. David is Absalom's father. But Absalom has convinced himself he can overtake his father. Not realizing that Absalom didn't have what his daddy did have, which was God's favor. See, you can self-appoint, but when you self-appoint, you're going to be disappointed because God only sustains what he put up. But what are you trying to say? Absalom, watch this, watch this. There are folk, there are folk, there are folk that will try to do things and they think they can do them simply because they think they can do them. Not understanding that you are able to do it because there's a grace on you. There is a favor on you. Somebody say, I'm grace and favor. So Absalom, 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 he thinks he can do it. And so look at verse 2. He says, I will come upon him, look at this, while he was weary. What's that? Emotions. He says, I'm going to get David when he's emotional. And what's this? Weak. And I'm going to make him afraid. And all the people who are with him are going to leave him. And I'm going to strike the king. Now look at how wicked this plan is. He says, listen, Absalom, I got the plan, man. I got the plan. Here's the plan. I'm going to make him scared when he's weak, when he's emotional. He's emotional because he can't figure out why you're doing this to him. He's emotional because he can't figure out why you won't be loyal to him. Be a good church. So, so I got to find him when he's in one of his weak moments, Absalom. You did this, and I need to find him when he's weak, and I'm going to make him afraid. I'm going to worsen his emotional state. And all the people who are with him, they're going to leave him so that I strike only the king. He said, I'm going to get him isolated and by himself when he's emotional, and then I'm going to strike him. He says, this is the plan. Now, now here's what I need you to get. Verse 3, then I will bring back all the people to you all, uh, uh, when all return except the man whom you seek. All the people will be at peace. And the saying, please Absalom and the elders of Israel. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Leave that verse up. And the saying, please, David's son. David, uh, Absalom sat up in the palace, eating the palace food, drinking the palace water, using the palace heating and cooling. Got it? Using the palace servants, living the good life. But now that he thinks he's got a shot to get David when he's weak, he says, that sounds good to me. But notice who was with him. The leaders of Israel. 
to somebody like, Bishop, Bishop, like, where are you going with this? Where are you going with this? Because I want you to see. I want you to see. They have now discovered that David's already emotional. And we need to seize on David while he's emotional. Watch this. Because, watch this. David wouldn't give us position, but Absalom, you've promised it to us. You've promised us something that David wouldn't give us. What's the point? Absalom had traitors around him, and he thought that they wouldn't do to him what they did to David. Let me help somebody tonight. Whatever people will do with you, they will do to you. If they're sitting up talking about other people with you, they're going to do it to you. If they're sitting up lying with you, they're going to do it. It's quiet. Absalom got so caught up in his pride, he's in his emojis too. He got caught up so much in his selfie. I'm Absalom. Hey, you want to take a picture with the future king? He got so self-absorbed that he says, oh, they're going to be loyal to me because I can change them because I can make a snake act different. I'm the snake charmer. I'm the horse whisperer. I'm the pig charmer. Watch this. Now, now look at this. Look at this. 2 Samuel 18, verse 14. So, watch this. Here's what happens. 2 Samuel 18, 14. Y'all still with me? Now, we're going to shout. We're going to shout in just a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm over time. 2 Samuel 18, 14. Then Joab said, now this is one of David's mighty men. I don't have time to take you through the story. They found Absalom. And when they find Absalom, they were like, dude, really? You really thought that you were going to take David off the throne? You really thought, because you had a couple of two, three folk that was listening to you, you really think you were going to displace the king? You really thought just because you had a couple of good sessions and this and that and that and the other, you really think? Look at what Joab said. Joab was one of David's mighty men. He's one of David's gladiators. He's one of David's fighters. Got it? He's one of the guys David didn't let get saved in church. Because just in case he ever needed to handle some business, he wouldn't be guilty of that sin because he wasn't officially saved. I'm being facetious. So, so Joab was, jo <laughs> jo jo <laughs> Joab said, I can't linger with you. He said, I can't even deal with you anymore. And he took three spears in his hand and he thrust them through Absalom's heart while he was in the midst of the terebinth tree. Somebody said, I like Joab. Now, look at this. So who's dead? Absalom. Got it? Now, Absalom's plan came to nothing, right? Absalom got that way and turned against who was loyal to him. Why? Emotions. But let's see what happened to David. I'm done. 2 Samuel 19, verse 1. Or verse one. And Joab was told, Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for this guy. And Joab was told, Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. Now notice, why would they go report that? Like, why did one of David's servants go to Joab and be like, we need to give you a message, sir. The king is weeping and mourning. Well, who are you crying over? Absalom. What do you think happens when the angels go report to God? Okay, it's way quiet. So-and-so's weeping. Over what? That? They're weeping over that? <laughs> Look at verse 2. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people said that day, the king is grieved for his son. And the people stole back into the city that day as people who were ashamed steal away when they flee into battle. But the king covered his face and the queen cowed out with a loud voice saying, Oh, my son Absalom. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. He was a songwriter, so I think he was working on something. Look, look at verse 5. Then Joab came into the house of the king and said, Today, now Joab, now Joab was risky. I taught you this before. We read from this part on. Joab acted real risky because Joab came into the house of the king and said, Today, you have disgraced all your servants this day who have saved your life. He said, you, he was trying to kill you. And you're crying over him? They were the reason you didn't have joy. And you crying right here? 
He said, today you have disgraced all your servants who today have saved your life, the lives of your sons and daughters, the lives of your wives and your concubines. That's girlfriends. That's a whole nother message. Next verse. In that you love your enemies and you hate your friends. You have declared today you don't regard princes nor servants because today I think, I perceive, that if he was alive and all the rest of us died, you'd be happy. Some of you are like, Bishop, what does this have to do with Lincoln? I'm from Lincoln in a minute, verse 7. Now, therefore, now this is the king's servant. He says, get up, go out here, and say something nice to the people. He swear, because I swear for the Lord. <laughs> That's what the book says. If you do not go out, Ain't nobody going to stay with you this night. And it's going to be worse for you than all the evil that has befallen you from your youth until now. So Absalom had to get really bold because the king could have been like, kill him. I'm sad too. Like chop him into pieces. No, this is, you read your Bible. This is the kind of stuff they did. Read your Bible. The Lord is good, good and mercy and all that too. But if you mess with his people, he'll chop you up. Won't he do it? That's why folk ought not mess with you. Somebody get, act a little crazy with you, better say, if I was you, I'd be easy. I, I'd just be easy. I wouldn't talk like that. I wouldn't do that if I was you. You read the book. Look at verse 8. Here it is. Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told him, all the people saying, there is the king sitting in the gate. So the people came before the king, for every one of Israel had fled to his tent. Bishop, what in the world does this have to do with him linking? What are you talking about? What did he link to? David linked to when his daddy wouldn't fight for him. Be a good church. So he now felt responsible to fight for Absalom, even though Absalom wouldn't fight for him. Y'all not saying that. There are certain people that you have a loyalty to that have already proven they're not good for you, but you are linking to somebody else that... Let, let, me, let me walk the principle out. Let me walk the principle out. Let me walk the principle out. Let me walk, can I walk it out? Can we just walk it out tonight? Can we do it on the, all sides tonight? Let's walk it out. We're going to walk it out. Watch this. Why did Dave, why was he crying over a fool that just tried to kill him? Why was he upset? Why was he bothered by this? Why was he moved by this? Why, why was he sitting there? They killed Absalom and he's sitting there crying. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son, my son, Absalom. He's sitting there crying so much so Joab walks in and says, man, you better get up and you better go say something to these people. These people have risked their life for you and you're sitting here crying over the dude that was trying to take your seat. You're sitting here crying over stuff you ought to be shouting about. Because do you think he would have had mercy with you? David didn't know about the plot from chapter 17. David didn't know that they were trying to come get him while he was weak. sitting up crying and Joab is like do you know what these guys are doing if you read the story somebody actually went and warned him here's the principle I'm done I talk a little longer but am I helping you what happened in David's life when David was a kid now we're in first Samuel when David was a kid Jesse or excuse me Samuel the man of God comes to Jesse's house that's David's father and David now is sitting out and he's out with the sheep he brings in, Jesse does, seven of his sons. And Samuel says, bring us what all your sons, because amongst your sons is the next king. Jesse says, well, we're excited to have you, sir. God bless you. We're excited. Praise the Lord. We're glad you're here, sir. Amen. And whenever the man of God showed up, he showed up with a great entourage. And they came in, and they make party. They feed him. That's right. Feeding the men of God for him. They feed him. And all this is a big old ta-da. It was a big old story. Everybody taking selfies and stuff. Now my Samuel's here for the anoint the next king. <laughs> watch this, watch this, watch this. And so he brings in his, ki- his sons. And the Bible says that Samuel held up the horn of oil. And the way it worked for the Hebrew culture is that the oil would not flow unless that was God's choice. So he took the ram's horn, filled it with oil, he put it over the first son's head. Nothing happened. Second son, 
Nothing happened. The Bible says all these guys look like kings. They look like they were the part. But what you need to know is that counterfeits always show up before the real thing does. Counterfeit friends show up before real ones do so that you'll appreciate a real one. Counterfeit folk in your life will show up before real folk do so you'll appreciate the real ones. Seven, he goes through all of them. The oil will not flow. And Samuel looks and says, listen, man, Lord, I know I didn't mishear you. He says, listen, is this everybody? This is all your sons? There's the eighth one. New beginning. He's out there. Uh, he's out there with the sheep, but it couldn't possibly be David. He said, "Go get him. I'm not sitting down until you bring him to me." They go get David. David walks in the house. I'm sure David is like, "What's going on in here? You ever been called into something that you thought you should have been in in the first place?" I'm like, "Well, what are y'all meeting about in here? Didn't nobody tell me about this meeting?" I thought this was the marketing department. I ain't I the assistant director of marketing. Well, why is the marketing department meeting without the assistant director? Okay. David comes in. David's like, what's going on in here? He sees Samuel. Bless you, sir. Bless you, man of God. Okay. He bowed the knee before the Lord. He said, he said, come here. The Bible says he's ruddy, bright eyed, good looking. And the Lord says, arise. Anoint him. This is the one. Samuel anoints him in the midst of his brethren, the Bible says. His brothers have to sit there and watch. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from what? That day forward. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But his brothers are sitting there like. And you'd think David would be happy, wouldn't you? you think David would be excited. He's getting ready to be the king. He is the king. He's going to be the king. You'd think he'd be happy, wouldn't you? You'd think he'd be joyful. You'd think he'd, you'd think he'd be excited about it. But he's not. Bishop, how do you know? I'll tell you in a minute, but let me tell you what happened. The Bible doesn't record it, but let me tell you what happens because we can deduce this through the appropriate application of psychological principles, which would be the same for David back then as they are for you and I now. David's like, I'm so glad you want me, Samuel. Well, why don't Jesse want me? Why don't my daddy want me? Okay, wait a minute. Why didn't he even invite me in the house to be considered? What's wrong with me? His father didn't fight for him. I'm going to help you get the link. Please catch where we're going with this. Please catch where we're going with this. Please catch where we're going with this. Why wouldn't he fight for me? Why did he love them so much that he dressed them up, let them take baths, let them anoint themselves and get ready to see Samuel? But he didn't even invite me from off the field with the sheep. Is there anybody in here where you've ever felt or seen yourself as being the outcast, as being the rejected one? As being nobody, 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 nobody. Okay. Nobody. So he's like, well, huh. So Bishop, how do you know he felt that way? Look at his decisions later on in life. Look at the decisions he made later on in life. Bad relationship decisions. Rejected people do that. Bathsheba? That was a function of his rejection. Setting up Uriah, that's a function of his rejection. So now as a 16-year-old boy, watch this, his body has, come on, catch the principle. His body learns how to respond to rejection. His mind learns how to respond to rejection. So he doesn't say anything, he just acts it out. So if you ask him what's wrong, he'll say nothing. But if you look at what he does five minutes later, it's clear something is. So here's the link. He's now, at that time, the time this is happening, he took the throne at around 30. It's been 14 years now. He has Absalom. He's probably, you know, in his 50s, something like that, 40s, 50s, something like that. 
a, from a 16-year-old boy, now a link is created. And while he's in his 40s or 50s, emotionally, he's 16. I'm going to help your neighbor. If you, if you will let me, if you will let me tonight, every link that needs to be broken will be broken tonight. If you will let this word come forth, every link. Jesus, I'm way over time. I'm just going to put like just two notes, like God is good. That's what I'm going to put in my notes. He's in his 40s or 50s. He's the king. Everybody stands when he says stand, sit when he says sit. They move when he says move, and they move just like that. But emotionally, he's still a 16-year-old boy linked to saying, Jesse didn't want me. What's wrong with me? So you know what he keeps doing? He keeps getting married. The Bible says that they saved his wives and his girlfriends. He kept thinking another relationship's going to fix me. I just need to get into another relationship. That's the problem. I'm lonely. Let me go get somebody else. That's the problem. Let me go talk to somebody. Don't you want somebody to love? He said, I just need, you know what? It ain't a wife I need. I need a side girl. Okay, if this was ladies' night, but it's not, so don't do it. Don't do it. He was like, maybe I'm not built for commitment. So maybe what I need to do is have me some additional options available. Because that'll make me feel better about Jesse don't want me. It's quiet, church. It's quiet, church. So now he's in his 40s or 50s. Watch the link. And Absalom's trying to kill him. The only thing David can think of is he's my son. And Jesse didn't fight for me. So even though this man's trying to kill me, I'm going to fight for him. It's quiet, church. It's quiet, church. It's quiet, church. He says, I should see the fact that he tried to kill me. If you read the story in between the chapters, somebody actually tipped David off to that fact. I should know this. I should know what's going on. I should know what's happening. I should know what the issue is. But all I can think about is when I was 16, Jesse didn't want me. And I got all these people around me that do. I got all this love as you play softly. I got all of these people fighting for me. But all I remember is Jesse didn't want me. And I didn't try everything to fix it. This is David talking. I got married a few times, got a couple side girls. I done, done this, I done took over everything you can possibly take over. I done built this, I done done that, I done done this, I done done this. I love to praise the Lord. I do this. Ain't that something? He linked and was a radical praise and worshiper, which means his praise and worship never fixed his link because that required effort. And Joab says, are you here? Joab says, you're sitting here, and I perceive that if he was still alive after he tried to kill you, you'd be more happy with him than you would with us. Watch the link, because I wish Jesse would have been happy with me. Instead of all them. The book says, touch your neighbor and say, the book says. The book says that Joab says, you better get up and you better pick another emotion because you are making a link. Watch this. That has made you loyal to what's not loyal to you. 
You don't even know why you do it. It's because you're late. Your neighbor, many people get what's called a superhero complex. Where you want to save and fix everybody. You don't, you don't meet people, you meet projects. And the reason that happens is often because there's a story, and we're not going to go there in First Samuel. I, I way over taught my time. I way over taught my time. Well, uh, us is. Well, us is. Uh, thank you for the four people that told me. <laughs> Rest of people are like, no, nah, I ain't going to tell them that because I know it's, a, no, it's, it's about time. Come on, sir, about time. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. It's some cities shouting. <laughs> Amen. I, I'm just being funny. Watch this. Watch this. I'm just being funny. Watch this. Watch this. There's certain things that we do, and we think it's godly. We think it's wise. We think it's this. But oftentimes, there's a link. Have you ever asked yourself, why do you make some of the decisions you make? Maybe there's a link you haven't found. David never found that link. So he died unfulfilled because he never built. The Lord says, I forbid you to build my temple. Solomon will do it. He said, because you, God says, you've shed too much blood. That's what he told him. He said, you've shed too much blood. And because all the blood you've shed, I can't have you doing this. You, I'm going to have to pick somebody else. I'll get Solomon. You want to fight too much. And the reason you want to fight is because Jesse wouldn't fight. The reason you start stuff with people is because Jesse wouldn't start nothing about you. This is too deep for Wednesday, but, but, but sometimes you got to go say, where is this link originally from? Where is this link originally from? Where did this start in me? David was 40, 50-something years old and still emotionally a 16-year-old. Mad because his daddy wouldn't fight for him. So he now starts fights with everybody. What about some of our young people so mad and angry now? Yes, I understand there's some stuff going on in the nation that'll make you mad and angry. But someone was mad before they saw that. Why? Because they are trying to exert a fight for something that was not exerted for them. So here David is. I'm totally done right here. If I don't stop in 30 seconds, just start playing shout music and I'll stop. And then I'm going to do this. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, watch this. Watch this. Say, when I find the link... I stop the sink. When I stop linking, I stop sinking. You'll never stop making the same bad decisions until you go find the link that created them. When you find the link, break the chain. Find the link, break the chain. Make sense? You ready to pray that prayer tonight? Ready to break some links tonight? Ready to break some chains tonight? Father, we thank you for your word tonight, sir. We honor you. We bless you. Tonight, I pray that this word, that this word would have not fallen on deaf ears, but that this word, Father, would fall on upon the ears of individuals that intend to break every link that needs to be broken. When we break the negative links, we break the chains. So tonight, I release a grace. I release a grace. A double portion of that grace released even on Monday's Command Your Week video. I release a grace. What is that? You're super to our natural. I release a grace on everybody under the sound of my voice that they would no longer link but begin to think. If it could slip past David, it's possible it could slip past us. But tonight, we speak an interruption to every link. I speak clarity 
I declare that tonight when you leave this experience, you'll see things more clearly than you've ever seen them before about your own life. I said, you will see things more clearly than you've ever seen them before about your own life. And you would see yourself as the head and not the tail, above and not beneath the king and a priest. You'd see yourself on 10 tonight in the name of Jesus. I told you something miraculous was going to happen. What happened? You just found where the link is. And that's a miracle. I told you something supernatural was going to happen. What was supernatural? You just got the authority to bind up this thief called the link. And the book says when you find a thief, he's got to repay you seven times. He's got to repay you seven times. Speak freedom into your life. Freedom from every negative link. Links that go back to when you were in your childhood years. Links that go back to when you were a teenager. Links that go back to when you were younger. Links that go back to when you were abused. Link, links that go back to when you were dropped. Links that go back to when you were abandoned. Links that go back to when you were not treated properly. And I speak freedom to you. Say your name. Say it like you mean it. Say your name. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight. I speak life into you, freedom from every link that's been destructive. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that every link that must be broken, you have the grace and the fortitude to break it. You will not be consumed and controlled by your emotions. But you are free. But you are free. In Jesus' name, you ought to give God praise all in this place tonight. Oh, come on, church, give him praise. Tonight, if you're in this worship experience and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I've got great news for you. There's forgiveness for you. Secondly, if you give your life to the Lord but you've not been faithful to him, i got good news. There's forgiveness for you. Say he loves me. When you understand that, it changes, changes the game for you. Because I got issues. Great. He loves you with your issues. You know, the real deal is, 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 is being thankful for folk who know your junk, your drama, your issues, and still say, love you, and show it. That's the kind of love our God has for us. He knows all of our junk, all of our drama, all our issues, and he still says, love you. And he shows it. Tonight, if you need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to him. We're going to be out on the count of three. I want you to throw your hands up. And when you do, we're going to shout and celebrate for you because we were all once standing in that same place. And tonight, there's forgiveness for you, whether you're at the Royal Campus or watching on the Internet Campus, Facebook Live, wherever you're at. On the count of three, throw that hand up. And we're going to shout and celebrate for you. If you're not sure, be sure tonight. This is your moment. One, two, three. If that's you, throw your hand up wherever you're at tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Now, everybody pray this for me. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you for dying in my place. Because of that belief and because of this confession, that this is my first time praying this, I am now a Christian. If I was far from you, I am reconnected to you. Great days are ahead of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give God praise tonight always for every decision made? Amen. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer, we're going to tell you what to do in just a moment. But just get three hugs in real quick to, uh, to the neighbor on your left and your right and somebody in another row or something. Just get three hugs in tonight. Just give them another compliment. Give them one more compliment. Give them one more compliment. You maybe don't know them. Maybe you do know them. That's all right. Give them a compliment. And you can be seated. Let's watch this. If you just made a decision to become a Christian or recommit yourself to Jesus today, send a text to the phone number 59769. And in the message content field, type the word decision. We will immediately send you a text with five simple steps to be a faithful Christian and a message from our bishop. If you're at the Aurora campus, please prepare to give now by using the two envelopes in the seat pocket in front of you or on your seat.